Hey everyone, my name is Boone and I live here in Paris, France. Now you may have seen some of my tutorials over on Premium Beat. I also have my own YouTube channel called Boonless Video where I produce a lot of After Effects related content. Now I'm going to be creating a lot of tutorials for Shutterstock, so if you want to see a lot of cool content coming out of the City of Lights, be sure to subscribe. I'm super, super excited. It's November 2019 and Adobe just released all the latest versions of their Creative Cloud applications. And Adobe Premiere Pro 2020 has a new tool called Auto Reframe. This makes editing for social media platforms incredibly easy. So essentially what it does is it allows users to change the aspect ratio of a clip or a sequence of clips, and then it uses artificial intelligence to automatically frame every clip. So for this video, I'm gonna put auto reframe to the test. I'm gonna show you how it works, and we're gonna see how it holds up. So I spent all morning wandering around Paris getting some b-roll shots to really test out this new tool. So here I have a shot of the Eiffel Tower. Now I shot this handheld, it's 16 by 9 aspect ratio, and I have the Eiffel Tower kind of framed on the right hand side, the right third of the frame. Now let's say I want to export this as an Instagram story, which is a vertical format. So what I can do here is I'm going to go up to sequence, sequence settings, and then I'm going to change this to a vertical frame size. So for that, we're going to change this to 900 pixels horizontally to 1600 vertically. And then I'll just click OK, OK. And that's gonna automatically change my sequence here, but our video clip is not looking that good. Now once again, before having this tool, I could go over here to Effect Controls, select my clip, and then just change, you know, reposition this how I want it to, change the scale, but I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. So that can be pretty tedious. But now I can go over to the Effects panel type in auto reframe and here's the new effect. I'm going to grab this effect and drop it over my clip and you see here it's going to automatically analyze and there now if we play it back that is perfectly centered. It's scaled it up, repositioned it, everything's good to go. If I go over here to the effect controls panel you can see down here there's an auto reframe effect and we have different motion presets. This is based on the motion if we're trying to track slower motion or faster motion, um, I can reanalyze this if I want. And if you look up here in the position, it's keyframed the position to keep that in frame. And once again, I shot this handheld, so there wasn't a lot of motion, but there was enough to just uh, add, have to add some keyframes to keep that perfectly center. And you can see how fast that was compared to if I had to do this manually. Okay, so let's try another shot here. This is a selfie style shot. I still have the Eiffel Tower in the background. And this is to really show you and test out um, what the AI is gonna deem more important. So that's essentially what it's doing. It's basically selecting what it thinks based on the machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, what is the most important. So hopefully it's gonna think that my face is the most important now and not the Eiffel Tower. So let's quickly change the sequence settings. Let's say we want this to be square. So I'll make this 1080 by 1080, select okay. And now we still have both items in frame here, but let's see what auto reframe is gonna do. I'm gonna slap it on here and again, it's gonna automatically analyze. And there we go, it's focused straight on my face. Let's play this back now. Very, very cool. And if we go over to the effect controls panel, you can see keyframes here once again. All right, now let's try out a more complex shot. So here's one of me walking through the frame. Let's put this in a vertical aspect ratio. So go back here, change this to 900 by 1600 vertical. And we can see here, it looks pretty terrible right now. I'm gonna go to effects, drop auto reframe over it. That is really pretty amazing. Now if I look at the bounding box here and zoom out in the program monitor, you can see specifically what is going on here. It's very, very cool. However, it's not perfect because, you know, it's not as smooth as it could be. It's a little bit jerky, but that's a quite an easy fix. I can simply go over here to the position attribute, and then I'm gonna just right click on any keyframe and go to temporal interpolation and switch that to Bezier. And now that should be nice and smooth. Now you might be thinking that this is still super tedious if you have to apply auto reframe for every single clip, but you don't, you can actually apply it to sequences. So over here, I've created this sequence that has my three different clips here, and these are originals. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up into my project panel and I can select this sequence and right click on it or I can go to sequence and then select auto reframe sequence. This is going to bring up this new dialog box here. I can rename it but it will automatically give me this because right now I have the aspect ratio set to square one by one. If I bring down this drop down menu, you see I have a couple of different options that are kind of the most popular aspect ratios. I have a four by five, a vertical nine by 16, and then the original horizontal that I shot this in. So let's do vertical nine by 16. Now you can see up here, it renamed uh, this with the uh, nine by 16 in parentheses, which is really helpful when I'm looking for this in my project panel. I also have an option to nest clips. Now the reason I'd wanna do this is if I already have existing animations on my position attribute, those will stay intact if I nest those. Very, very cool option. So now I'm gonna go down here and click create. It's gonna analyze all that and it's gonna duplicate my sequence. If you can see right here, it duplicated it. And now I can see a new folder up here titled Auto Reframe Sequences, and this is where my duplicate will reside. Now if I play this sequence back, let's see how it looks. Very nice, now the other thing I need to do is go back to this clip, go to Effect Controls, select Position, and then turn those keyframes to Bezier once again, and now this one is ready to rock and roll. Now the first few examples that I was using on the single clips where I was going into the sequence settings and changing the resolution of those sequences, I don't suggest that workflow. Even if you're working with one clip, it's a much better system to just use the auto reframe sequence dialog box because that's gonna duplicate your sequences, it's gonna keep your original sequence intact, and once again that renaming system is gonna keep everything nice and organized in your auto reframed sequences folder. Auto Reframe also works with text elements. So here I've just created this simple text element with a stroke here in the Essential Graphics panel. So now I'm gonna go and grab the sequence and select Auto Reframe Sequence. And uh, one by one is just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and create this new sequence. It's gonna analyze and you can see right away it reframed this. We have our square format and let's see if it's following me here. It's following me and I have the text resized, which is really, really amazing. And like I said, this is just the best workflow. If I go back here, I can do auto reframe sequence again, and we can just send this to a vertical one. Let's see what it does with the text here. There we go, it resized it. So now I did have a couple of problems when using this. I tried one shot initially where I was panning back and forth, one where I was shooting a statue one, and another where I was shooting the Eiffel Tower and naturally the perspective was obviously changing quite a bit. It's much better if you have objects moving through the shot. For instance, if you have a subject that's slightly moving side to side or a person walking through the frame as compared to um, doing perspective changes. I also had some problems with some Mogert templates. Um, some of the Mogert templates didn't resize. Another thing for the shot where I walked through frame, when I walked onto frame and when I walked off frame, the auto reframe would snap back to the center and I don't know if that's because there were some people in the background and it was readjusting to them or if it was just didn't know what to do after I walked out of frame and it went back to center. I could easily take care of that by deleting those keyframes at the end and at the beginning. Still, while it's extra work, it's still less work than doing this from scratch without auto reframe. All in all, this is a really, really great tool that's gonna save you time. If you publish anything to social media platforms, I highly suggest you use this. Also, if you do a lot of like lone wolf style videography where you're setting up a camera and you're shooting yourself and you don't have a camera operator this is really 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 helpful because if you move around and you're not exactly where you want to be this is going to help that so for instance I'm shooting everything here 16 by 9 if I want to publish some sound bites or some quick clips to Instagram in a square format it's going to be incredibly easy with auto reframe Okay, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. And again, we got a lot of cool content coming out on Shutterstock tutorials, so be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.